I welcome all of you to today's webinar, Ayush, the Traditional Science of Medicine, being jointly organized by the Embassy of India, Abu Dhabi, UAE, and the Consulate General of India, Dubai, UAE, in association with FITA. India and the United Arab Emirates enjoy strong bonds of friendship based on an age-old cultural, religious, and economic ties between the two nations. The bilateral relationship has matured and transformed into a comprehensive strategic partnership as both countries continue to explore deeper cooperation in new areas where healthcare has been a significant contributor. Amid the challenges that are posed due to COVID, globally, this has been impacted and has impacted the world in every aspect, being economic and social. The unequivocal focus that has been on evolving and transforming the healthcare delivery system. As two committed nations in the fight against the current pandemic, UAE and India continue to put their joint efforts to manage the COVID-19 outbreak. The UAE-India Healthcare Conference is an endeavor towards bringing expert ideas on addressing mutual concerns, developing bilateral partnerships and collaboration in the field of health exploring prospective solutions for strengthening healthcare sector. Keeping this in mind, it has been a proven fact that Ayush, India's traditional system of medicine, has supported the healthcare system in India challenging during the challenging times of the COVID-19. The Ayush systems of medicine have proved and provided immunity boosting solutions management of the infection, cure, and also post-restorative care. It has proved that the Ayur systems has the potential to complement the modern medicine and also offer a novel and effective way to manage the respiratory disorders and infectious diseases in the future. Having said that, the focus of the session is to encourage and promote cooperation in the field of Ayush between the two great nations discussing on approaches to integrate Ayush with the methodologies of modern science, bringing the benefits of Ayush into the mainstream of healthcare delivery system for both India and the UAE. The session would also have expert speakers sharing their success stories in treating COVID-19 affected patients in India, the Indian government's collaborative efforts on various studies to showcase the proven benefits of Ayush as an immunity booster and also immunomodulatory effects, and how mutual cooperation between countries and Ayush must be considered to combat the current pandemic and any such challenges. This webinar is a part of the series of the uh, webinar series being organized as a part of the India UAE Healthcare Conference. It is indeed a privilege, and I congratulate the Embassy of India Abu Dhabi, UAE, and the uh, Consulate General of India. Dubai UAE on this exciting initiative. I would like to introduce you to today's panel. His Excellency Dr. Aman Puri, Council General of India to Dubai. Sri Anurag Sharmaji, Honorable Member of Parliament, Government of India, Joint Managing Director Sri Baitinath Ayurved Bhavan Private Limited and Chair Fiki Ayush Committee. Dr. Manoj Nesri, Advisor, Ministry of Ayush and also is an advisor to the Fiki Ayush Committee. Mr. Raza Muid, the Executive Trustee of Hamdurth. Dr. P.M. Barrier, CMO and Superintendent Vaitya Ratnam, P.S. Barriers, Arya Vaitya Shah, Kotakal, Ayurveda Hospital and Research Center, Delhi. Mr. Abhishek Ramesh, Executive Director, Kairali Ayurveda. Dr. Srikant Nambudri, Chief Medical Officer, Sridham Ayurveda Kai Hospital. And also from the Sharjah Healthcare City, I also welcome the representatives. Before we begin, I would like to go across and also mention that during this entire interactive session, there would be an opportunity for you also to ask in your questions. I would request all of you to kindly use the chat option to pour in your questions to see that you use the time of these stalwarts in the uh, system of Ayush here today and also go back more enriched with information. Having said that, I would now request and also would like to invite the Honorable Council General, Dr. 
Aman to give his welcome address. Dr. Aman Puri, over to you. Thank you. Namaskar. Salaam alaikum. Very good afternoon to all of you. It is indeed a pleasure and privilege to join this August gathering for the session on Ayush as part of the UA India Healthcare Conference 2020. I am especially pleased to welcome Honorable Member of Parliament, Shri Anurag Sharmaji, who is also the Chair, Piki Ayush Committee, and the Joint Managing Director of Sri Vedinath Ayurved Bhavan Private Limited. I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Nesari, Advisor at the Ministry of Ayush. A special welcome to our friends from Sharjah, Mr. Hamad Al Muzemi, who's from the Sharjah Health Authority. And I must add that the Sharjah Healthcare City is very keen to have the investment and the footprint of Indian Ayush uh, organizations. I would like to welcome all other panelists. It's a very esteemed panel, and I'm looking forward to your valuable inputs and ideas as we discuss the potential of collaboration between UA and India. India has been giving specific focus on Ayush and also in its integration with the healthcare systems across the globe. The recognition of Ayush systems by the government of UAE and a strong presence of almost 500 plus Ayush practitioners across the United Arab Emirates vouch for the growing credence of Ayush in the Gulf nations. One of the Indian Ayurvedic cosmetics, personal care and drugs manufacturer Himalaya already operates a lab complex here in Dubai since 2013, and they are hoping to launch their global research center in Dubai next year. I'm sure many other Ayush organizations and organizations who have been doing extraordinary work in India will look at UAE as an opportunity uh, to establish their presence and grow their presence uh, not only for the UAE market, but also to meet the demands from the larger MENA region, for which UAE, UAE has always been a gateway for India. With these words, I thank everyone to join this panel and look forward to a very fruitful discussion. Thank you so much. Over to you, Arvind. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, Dr. Amun Puri. I think with these uh, words, you've really set the tone and also the premise that how the entire IU systems could actually be as a as a synergistic, um, you know, value approach that what both India and also the UAE region can you know come across together. So I would like to start off this discussion. I would like to once again welcome all my fellow panelists. Um, I'm sure that we're going to have a fantastic time. So Your Excellency, I would like to begin with you. Um, my first question to you would be that how do we create a synergy between the two nations to collaborate in the field of Ayush? You spoke that there are so many, um, um, you know, uh, avenues in which that how, uh, you know, companies could come in over there. Now, for example, I can give you two examples here. Uh, I have Anuragji here with me and also our uh, company, Shrishi Tatva. Both our companies all already have the COPP, um, WHO GMP uh, certifications for our products. And we've already been in this particular region, you know, for quite a while. How do you see that, you know, post this pandemic, uh, that the entire Ayush systems and particularly Ayurveda would have a greater uh, foothold in this region? Your comments, please. Thank you so much, Arvind. Well, I believe we have to have a multi-pronged approach, uh, like something what we are doing today, we're trying to identify the areas of synergy and complementarity between the two systems, uh, between the two countries. Uh, we need to understand that if we have to meet the demands of uh, patients here and uh, citizens here in the UAE, we need to be closer to them to understand the needs. So we need to uh, encourage Indian Ayush healthcare providers to have a presence in the UAE. That is one step. The other is we are also hoping that we would have uh, one of the universities here in UAE and the work is going on uh, in consultation with the Ministry of Ayush to have a program in, uh, in the education sector 
So that is how we will be able to train people into the IU system here in the UAE. Uh, we are encouraging UAE investors to look at investments into Ayush in India, because obviously it's a very uh, you know, proven system, which is uh, being used uh, specifically in the pandemic. It has shown its ability to support the prevention and support immunity, etc. So I think uh, if the two or three things I could say is that Indian providers need to look at having a footprint in the UAE. Uh, we need to encourage UAE investment into India in this sector. We need to uh, collaborate and create our partnerships in the healthcare sector, in the uh, specifically in the education field. And that is the way how we can increase the acceptability of Ayush here in the UAE. I think you've said that perfectly, Doctor, as what you rightly mentioned, that it's the holistic approach that would really, uh, uh, you know, do uh, this great science a lot of value in that particular region. You did make a mention about education and also the products and services going across together. Um, and yes, so I'm sure that all my industry members over here are certainly listening to this and we are all with you in this approach. Um, having said that, what is the scope that you feel that that's there for Ayush in the entire of UAE. Um, for example, um, you would note that, you know, as what you rightly mentioned, there's so much interest among herbal, among natural, amongst Ayurveda, amongst wanting to be sustainable, amongst wanting to uh, get back to the roots. So what sort of, um, uh, you know, a trend do you foresee that's coming across in the next five years over there in that region? Do you think that um, the entire interest towards Ayurveda or the Ayur systems is only momentary, or do you think that it is something that's uh, going to stay here for the long run? My sense is that this is going to exponentially increase in a full And also, uh, one one last question that I would like to ask you before I move on to my next panelist, uh, Sri Anurag Sharmaji, is that how do you think? Uh, that in terms of registrations of the medicines are uh, you know going to be made much easier um, as what i rightly mentioned to you in the beginning that both uh, anurag ji's and you know our organization already have the copp um, i can go st one step further by also mentioning that shri Shitatva also has the uh, uh, site license registration for our uh, products and our facility there in ua so how do you think that this pandemic has really changed that you think that uh, there's going to be a single window system and things are going to become much more easier for Ayurveda and the Ayur systems to flourish there. Yes, just picking uh, from an idea which we were discussing just in the previous session in the pharma and med tech, uh, medical devices sector. So I feel that, you know, these are milestones for which we need to work hard. We need to have a holistic approach and a multi-stakeholder approach by bringing all the key segments together and trying to uh, convey what exactly Ayush can offer and then trying to address the specifics, uh, the technical aspects of the registration, et cetera, would definitely be possible. Uh, things like, you know, there is a whole journey of acceptance of a system in, you know, uh, in other country. And as you know, Ayush is going through this journey worldwide. So I, uh, before coming to Dubai, I was serving in the United Kingdom. I was at Birmingham and we were trying to uh, convey to the National Health Service of the UK what Ayush can offer. So, you know, every uh, everywhere we'll have a kind of a different cha challenge. We all know that what Ayush can offer. And I'm sure uh, several individuals who are resident of UAE have benefited from Ayush. They have actually traveled to India. They travel extensively to, you know, let's say Kerala and other parts of India, to avail of the services. They, they know the benefits at an individual level, but at, a, at an establishment and the system level, at a larger uh, policy level, yes, we have a challenge and we have a process to follow where we have some work to do. And I think by bringing all key stakeholders together and uh, taking advantage of uh, opportunities like the Sharjah Healthcare City, which is offering Indian Ayush organizations to come and set up, uh, you know, their offices and their presence. So I think that is the way forward, how we can bridge this gap and uh, build trust on the system and go ahead 
and get the registrations, etc., more streamlined. Thank you very much uh, for that, Your Excellency. I'm sure that uh, uh, these uh, steps that what you've um, you know told us right now, the entire industry would make note of this, and we'll certainly see that we work towards this along uh, with your guidance and also with our ministry's guidance here. Um, now, moving over to uh, Mr. Anurag Sharma. Um, uh, Anuragji, I would like to ask you that, you know, being, the, being an established brand in the global market, you know, by then, how do you see that the growth of the Ayush medicines as globally, and especially in the uh, uh, UAE uh, region and also the UAE market, how has it impacted, how is it so important over here for you as a brand? Uh, firstly, thank you so much, Arvindji, and a very warm welcome to all my friends and others in the UAE. And Dr. Aman Purisa, thank you so much for joining us for this webinar and to all the organization, organizers here. Uh, let me just begin with a couple of things, Arjun We've been in the UAE market for some years now. But what we find there is that it's not grown exponentially the way it has in India in the last couple of years, very frankly, because India used to have about 67% of the Indian population at some point in time in 2015 estimated was consuming Ayush medicines. Today, it's nearly 90%. And with the advent of this pandemic, we find that the Indian trust in the Ayush system has grown up exponentially. So it's really changed here in India. Globally, of course, like we all the manufacturers here in India are so well aware that you have demands from countries you've never even talked to before. But here, as far as uh, UAE is concerned, I think there are a couple of bottlenecks which we need to ease out. And like Kamal Puri just mentioned that, yes, the system needs to be sensitized. And I think this would, I would take this as an opportunity from Fiki's side to actually request the UAE FDA authorities to come down to India and we could show them the kind of work which we all do. And that not only means in terms of industry, but also in terms of our colleges. And today I'm very happy to say that Government of India has announced three of our top leading colleges as institutes of national importance. And we could take them there, they could learn how the system is, how scientific it has now become, and how much of modern parameters and methodologies, uh, methods we today follow, whether it's in toxicity or whether it's in uh, proving the drugs clinically. And I'm very happy to say that today, most Indian companies are doing a lot of research. I think that research could be validated here. In India, it could also be validated in a place like Sharjah, healthcare city. So that, I think, would be the way forward. But I think a couple of little bottlenecks remain. So once we are past those, UAE and India have had such a close relationship over centuries that for us to really be able to be there and convince the local population to go use Ayurveda or Yonani or homeopathy is not so much of a challenge. The challenge really lies in overcoming the hurdles inbuilt into the system. I think that's just a little effort which we all in India need to really make. Bedanath, I'm happy to report is doing no, well. Please no, please go ahead, Anuraki. Yes. Anurag, I'm happy report is doing very well. People there do recognize that we've been doing research for a very, very long time. One of our books, of course, is considered a pharmacopoeia in India, the Ayurveda pharmacopoeia, the Ayurveda Sar Sangre. And uh, apart from that, the highest single award given by the President or the Prime Minister of India since 1983 in the name of my grandfather, is for research. And from 2005, we've even donated a college to Bundelkhand University to do higher research. And I today operate with over 40 Ayurvedic colleges where we help youngsters do more research in Ayurveda and try and encourage them. I think once, like uh, the Henri Council General mentioned, we get these collaborations with the local colleges and the education system there. Ayurveda would be quite the buzzword, so to speak, in the UAE. 
No, I think that really fantastically said, Anuragya, as what you rightly mentioned that, um, you know, from Baidyanath's side, you have been there, you know, as a brand for, you know, so many years. And and yes, you know, taking it forward uh, in, in an approach whereby it's not only product, but also a whole lot of other services is also extremely important. Um, my next question to you is that, see, how do you, uh, uh, you know, give some advice in case in in case if somebody new wants to come into the sector, um, you know, you're also COPP and WHO GMP certified. So right now, what are the uh, uh, advices that what you would give, uh, you know, people who would like to venture into uh, this particular stream? Is it really uh, so ripe for people to get into this particular sector right now? What should they do? Sir, so I would happily welcome people coming into this sector. Today we are a $300 billion uh, rupee industry. We are expecting this to go over $1 billion. Uh, sorry, 1000 billion. So that for the government of India's prime aim to achieve in the next couple of years, I think the sector is going to grow by more than 16 to 18% CAGR. And with that kind of growth ratios, we need a lot of young blood to come in. And uh, I would just say, okay, now there are just a couple of things in Ayurveda which really need to be focused on. First is a patient-centric approach. Foremost, what you decide, whether you're from the services field or you're from the manufacturing side, it's a patient-centric approach. And Ayurveda gives us this independence. Ayush, in fact, not only Ayurveda, Ayush gives us this independence of making and designing a product to individual needs. When we talk about vat, kaf, and pit, you're actually designing it towards individual needs. Secondly, the other big thing is to really concentrate on quality. And quality comes not only from just buying, also in the process itself. So if people do follow WHO, GMP certifications, even the Ayush premium certifications, it would ensure end product quality, which would be acceptable. And I think uh, Middle East, MENA markets are very, very exciting. These are, I mean, they're like extensions of the Indian subcontinent. They think like us, they behave like us, and they're very, very knowledgeable people in their own resource. And for centuries also, every old civilization, Nani, a lot of Nani medicines have come into India from the, actually from the Middle East. So, I mean, these systems have evolved. So for us to go there, and I think for youngsters in India to whether we operate it through apps, we use modern technologies to deliver. We just need to be there on the on the ground, so to speak. Very fantastically said. And just one last question I have for you: What are uh, the uh, three things that what um, you know that you would want from your side, from Bajanath's side? to change in terms of policy or regulations to see that how it could be enabling for the entire industry there in the UAE market? So, okay, from firstly, I would speak from the industry, from the manufacturing side, not from the services side. I think we have a lot more people here from the services side who are expert panelists and far more knowledgeable than I am in that sense. I would one request is that you need to treat Ayush sector separately from what you would do, chemical medicines. Their parameters cannot be equivalent to our parameters. Our parameters are completely different. So once that acceptance happens, and they start accepting the fact that yes, our clinical research, our toxicity reports, pharmacology is going to be very different because we affect the human body very differently. So one is sensitizing them to that. Secondly, a lot more faster approach because in this times of pandemic, Ayush can and has delivered benefits across India, which are very, very visible. And I think we could have done the same if we were effectively more present in the Middle East. I think that could have been a very big change for the Middle East, East itself. We could have helped a lot more patients there recover much faster. We could be used as an adjunct therapy there. And I think thirdly, since these are growing and largely very fast growing economies. They could also benefit from Indian investment in their sectors. So I think if they allow us to come in, 
and do give us benefits of time to get in a lot more raw material and products from India and setting up facilities there would be very, very helpful because then, like I've always said, Middle East was probably one of the largest launch pads for us to go into Africa. And Africa is another market which is very large and which is very Ayurveda, Yunani, Mopati friendly markets. So that could be a very big change for us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anuragji. You're always very clear in your wants and, and yes, and that's something that what the industry definitely appreciates from yours. Um, going across to my next panelist, Dr. Manoj Nisri, we've spoken a lot about products, we've spoken about registrations, but what about the uh, fact of how the entire IU systems have been given greater recognition during the uh, pandemic? So, uh, uh, Dr. Manoj Nisri ji, I also would uh, request you to also uh, speak on some of the clinical trials that what uh, have happened during uh, this particular pandemic in the IU systems. Over to you, doctor. Sure, thank you. Uh, first of all, as you mentioned regarding the recognition to Ayush and uh, especially Ayurved, uh, you may know that in, since last uh, few years, uh, there has been uh, wider recognition to Ayurved uh, across the world. It is not only in the Indian subcontinent, but uh, across the world. So whether you consider it as, uh, as uh, Malaysia in 2016, so Malaysia recognized Ayurved as a system of medicine, in UAE itself, in UAE, Bahrain, in all this uh, for Middle East countries, uh, Ayurveda is formally recognized uh, as a system of medicine. The products, they can be registered there as medicine. Uh, the Ayurveda as a profession has been actually recognized over there. So there are decrees, there are regulations for that. At the same time, Ayurveda is also recognized in many African countries, including South Africa and Tanzania and many more. And uh, the ministry is working very aggressively for the recognition uh, in different parts of the world. Uh, you will be uh, aware that uh, last year when the Brazilian president, he had been to India. So that time Brazil and India, the signed the MOU that time, the Ministry of Ayush uh, signed an MOU for the collaboration with Brazil. And there is a lot of this interest, especially in the Latin America, in Colombia, I will recognize. In Switzerland, I will recognize. It is recognized. But we are also working with uh, Suriname, uh, Brazil, uh, uh, Mex uh, Mexico, uh, Argentina, Peru, uh, Uruguay, Chile. So the, the work is going wider and wider. And recently, with the help of the uh, Ministry of External Affairs, we also had a webinar with the SEO countries because SEO is probably the largest uh, market, it is almost the 30% mar market uh, in the world, the SEO countries. And that's why we had also one webinar with the uh, SEO countries and we had proposed to have a, a separate subgroup for the traditional medicine under SEO. And most of the SEO countries, they are favoring this proposal for this uh, traditional medicine. So the overall uh, recognition to Ayurveda and traditional medicine it is uh, widening, it is spreading very fast. And especially in this uh, COVID pandemic, uh, I would say that Ayurveda could get a, a, a huge opportunity to prove the efficacy of Ayurveda, not only as a, a prophylactic measure or the preventive uh, measure, but also as the uh, treatment. Uh, in uh, this last seven, uh, six, seven months, the ministry has launched 76 uh, research projects so it's a huge one 76 research projects out of the 76 research projects 67 they are the clinical trials so the 67 clinical trials have been launched by the ministry of ayush and some of them they are too large uh, i would say that the largest cohort study in the world uh, it is the delhi police study and in that 80000 delhi police uh, oh, because they were the uh, no, frontline warriors for the COVID, and they were provided the Ayurveda intervention as the prophylactic. And when we started giving this through the All India Institute of Ayurveda, so that time the everyday incidence of COVID in Delhi Police was in three digits. 
and when we started there gradually it came down and this intervention was given for two months and during this time the uh, covid positive cases so from three digit it came down to single digit so this is the biggest achievement and uh, not only this uh, we have also engaged a few professional agencies to uh, analyze the data so that data analysis work is going on but uh, the uh, uh, fatality has gone down the uh, patients who were admitted in the hospital so uh, the mild to moderate level of patient they were admitted uh, though the hospital is well equipped with 18 ventilators and the icu none of the patient it uh, deteriorated it required any kind of ventilator support nor they were transferred to any other hospital so this is biggest achievement uh, the further thing is that uh, usually it takes around uh, 15 days uh, to recover uh, through the western medicine but in ayurvedic medicine the patient they become asymptomatic within three to four days and within seven to ten days they become covid negative so this huge data is available already uh, through the ipd that is the indoor uh, department uh, almost 325 patients uh, they were uh, they were treated this is in addition to those who were given treatment at the OPD level. So this is regarding the All India Institute of Ayurved. At the same time, the ministry also has uh, collaborated with CSIR, the Department of Science and Technology, the Department of Biotechnology, and the Department of Atomic Energy. So all these various departments we have collaborated. There is one clinical trial of Ashwagandha, which is going on with CSIR. There is another clinical trial on IU64. So that is also going on. Uh, there are many clinical trials which are going on uh, based on the uh, Guduchi, that is the Tinospora cordifolia. There is one trial with the combination of Guduchi and Piper Longum Pippoli. So that is going on and the results are very good. And uh, based on these various clinical evidences, the biggest achievement is that the government of India uh, integrated Ayurved and Yoga in the treatment protocol of the COVID. So this is a natural protocol of the uh, COVID treatment and management in which the Ayurved and yoga it has been uh, integrated. And probably it is the first time in the history after the independence that the Ayurved is formally integrated into any national treatment protocol of any pet pandemic or epidemic. So this is the biggest achievement, which is the outcome of the uh, research. And one more thing I would like to uh, mention over here that we are also working with uh, so a few more countries to have intercontinental uh, tri clinical trials on the Ayurvedic formulations. And in this, we are also having one partner from South Africa, one partner from Brazil, one from USA, and one from uh, Germany. So this is going to be an intercontinental clinical trial. Uh, on the same product and we will be working not only the clinical part at the same time the pharmacokinetics and the dynamics of the formulation this is really fantastic doctor and also i must make a mention that uh, you know dr nasri's um, you know uh, leadership you know especially in terms of advising both industry and the government is you know really uh, um, you know on on a very very visionary approach um, and also there's one more thing that what I would like to add on to uh, uh, Dr. Nisri that what he mentioned is that during the pandemic, um, the entire Ayush sector was also put into the uh, essential commodities and services yes. uh, law as well. And I think that this is something that's uh, a great achievement, uh, Doctor, and, you know, we all congratulate you, uh, you know, collectively for this. Um, you made a mention about so many different uh, collaborations, both um, inside the nation and also outside. Now, considering that India and UAE are really coming across closer in terms of uh, bilateral tries and also uh, focusing on greater economic growth together, what do you think are the steps that what the ministry would like to take across and to see that how the entire IU sector uh, can be made uh, a more integral part of the uh, health sector of UAE? Absolutely. For this regard, uh, first of all, as uh, Dr. Aman, he mentioned in his uh, initial remarks that the education is the foremost important sector. Uh, we have to integrate uh, Ayurved and the Ayur systems in the, uh, the, the formal education, which is very essential. Uh, from the Ministry of Ayush, we have the program for the fellow to provide the fellowship. And uh, we don't get many uh, 
uh, the participants all many students from UAE. So I would request the Indian mission to promote the in, uh, this Ayush fellowship program so that we can get more and more number of students from the uh, UAE as well as the other countries in the Middle East so that we can have this more percolation, more awareness as well as when we talk about the Ayurveda or the Ayush systems, there has to be uh, so many number of service providers at the same time there has to be a lot of awareness. So this Ayush Fellowship Program, uh, in which we provide uh, 104 uh, scholarships, and this can be promoted. This is the uh, major initiative that I would like to say. At the same time, he was also talking about the uh, promoting the investment. Now, when we are talking about the investment uh, from the Ministry of Ayush, we can provide the uh, uh, the uh, support to the extent to provide the technical and the uh, the policy kind of support to any franchise investors who would like to invest either in India or in uh, uh, the uh, UAE to establish Ayurveda institutions. And when I say Ayurveda institutions, so it may be the educational institute, it may be hospitals. So these kind of hospitals, they are required to be there. The, the Ayurveda center of excellence, so they need to be there. So this kind of collaboration has to be there and we'll be very happy to have this kind of collaboration. Uh, as you know that the government of India has given more thrust on the Ayush-based medical tourism. And this Ayush-based medical tourism uh, in that there could be uh, many more meetings, B2B meetings. Uh, two, two to three round of meeting we had organized uh, last year when the lockdown was not there. Uh, with the help of uh, Minister of Commerce. Under the Minister of Commerce, there is an uh, organization called as SEPC, that is the Service Export Promotion Council. And with the help of Service Export Promotion Council, we had organized one meeting at Mumbai, one meeting at uh, Chennai, one at Bangalore, and where the uh, ambassadors of various countries, they were also invited, some investors and tour operators, from the UAE and other Middle East countries and some SEO countries, they were also there. And we have also invited the various hospitals uh, from the IOC system, whether they are from Ayurveda, United Siddha, all of them, they were, so they were invited over there. So these kind of initiatives that the BDC has taken, and if we continue to have these kind of initiatives, I'm sure that uh, if within a very short time, we can achieve to have a good uh, presence of Ayush in UAE. Thank you very much, Doctor. And uh, I would like to take the key word from you uh, saying that, uh, that it's uh, collaboration. So it's a collaborative approach that would bring both the economies together. Um, and in the spirit of collaboration, uh, it is my honor. And also, I'm very happy to invite Mr. Ahmad al Huzimi, uh, the representative from the Sharjah Healthcare City, to uh, come onto the panel and kindly make his presentation. Uh, Mr. Ahmad, over to you. Yeah. Yes. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Mr. Ahmad. Good afternoon. Alhamdulillah. How are you? Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Yes. Um, I would like to preface by saying that I have been treated with the Ayurveda approach before five years ago, and I'm very happy with the result. It was very good, but unfortunately, the, the clinic was very far from me. And, and you know, Ayurveda needs over time, like it's not happening over one day. So it was really good. I have a first-hand experience. My aunt as well, she was traveling to India. She got her disc, I think the neck, uh, L, um, the S, or I don't know the, the exactly, but she got her neck fixed as well. She always do travel to India. And um, what's better than a guy that, you know, has the first-hand experience than to talk to you about the uh, Sharjah Healthcare City. Thank you, everyone. Good afternoon, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. My name is Hamad Al-Mazmi from the Commercial Department of Sharjah Healthcare City. It's my privilege and my honor to give a brief presentation on the healthcare investment opportunities in Sharjah during this UAE India Healthcare Conference 2020. So allow me just to share with you the screen. Please just... Uh, Mr. Binu, can we request you to kindly have your video camera on, please? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just one moment. Guys, can you? Yeah. One second. Uh, is it? Uh, 
already that this was happening. Yes, um, we, we can yeah. see the slide. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. So allow me to start. Um, just with the history of the uh, Sharjah Healthcare City, it was formed with an Emir decree in 2012 in accordance to the vision of the government of Sharjah to transform the Emirate into a regional healthcare hub. Once developed, the Sharjah SHCC Sharjah Healthcare City would be amongst the few or world largest healthcare clusters, like it will be around 4.5 million square meters. As you can see, the location, it's located in a really strategic place close to the university city, as you were talking uh, in education, as well as it's close to Sharjah International Airport and Dubai International Airport, thus for encouraging um, healthcare tourism. Um, as we can see here from the map, it's um, strategically located between two main highways connecting all of the seven emirates of the UAE. As you know, UAE is uh, consulted, uh, consisted of seven emirates. The uh, Abu Dhabi is the capital, and Sharjah is one of the second or the third largest uh, city emirate. As you can see, here's the concept uh, design of the. Uh, it's uh, it's divided into clusters. Here, let's see a um, better picture. As you can see, the logistic zone it will be one side. The hospitality zone would be another side. Like we try to cluster them just to. Um, make them more attractive to patients and even investors. Here are the facilities we offer at Sharjah Healthcare City. Uh, we offer a plot of land for to build, if you wish to build a hospital or a standalone clinic, uh, as well as if you wish not to build uh, in the beginning, you want to start with a small investment, we offer clinical suits. Um, you can uh, rent the cl clinical suits and start your business. Um, we're not only focusing on treatment and cure, but also supporting industry, such as uh, warehouses, manufacturing, and stocking purposes. For example, if you want to ship to Africa, as you said, it's a, it's a big market for yourselves. So I think it can, we can see like ways around. And as well as you can, like we also have ready-made offices for any consulting to, you know, to have a foothold in the region, if you wish to as well. Uh, you can have consulting and trading or any field in healthcare, not only Ayurveda and uh, As you can see, I would like to share with you a glance of the completed clinical building which we have ready to lease. Offices, clinics, like I said, business centers as well. Uh, state-of-the-art infrastructure and modern, uh, state-of-the-art building with modern infrastructure and amenities. Here, as you can see, we, we cater to any of your business needs in healthcare, like you can see laboratories, single and multi-doctor clinics, small, large, medium hospitals, rehabilitation centers, yoga, wellness spas, as well as uh, complementary and alternative medicine. We highly encourage, actually, complementary and alternative medicine, like Ayurveda, homopathy, and approved ancient me healing methods. India is well known for their proven natural remedies, like Ayurveda. We, are, we really invite you um, into this niche market and uh, hopefully you might uh, establish that hospitals to benefit the huge volume of the MENA region patients. Um, I would like to end this with, uh, let me conclude with this presentation. Uh, thank you, Indian Consulate, for giving us uh, this opportunity to present Charge Healthcare City and thank you all for uh, your kind attention. Thank you so much. much. Thank you so much, Mr. Ahmed. I'm sorry, it, it, it cuts sometimes when I'm talking and uh, maybe because of the connection. I hope everyone was hearing good, listening. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Ahmed. Yeah. Thank you very much for your presentation. And, yeah. and yes, we could hear you very clearly, not to yeah. worry. So thank you very much for your presentation. And, um, and yes, I think that you have shown um, uh, everybody that what's the scope and also the level of interest that what uh, Sharjah Healthcare City has for yeah. the Ayurveda and also allied sciences. Thank yes. you very much for that. Thank you. Uh, moving, Thank you. Yeah. Moving the over to my yeah. next, moving over to my next speaker, Mr. Razad Mui. Um, I would like to ask you a question saying that I think this entire more. pandemic, uh, uh, Mr. Razad, Yes, yes. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, doctor. So doctor, during the entire pandemic, uh, 
uh, you know, when it was at its high, uh, how do you think uh, that, you know, Yunani has made uh, an impact and we are all very eager to understand, saying that uh, what has the entire system of Yunani done during the pandemic to ensure that both immunity and also on the curative aspect that, you know, what has the uh, system of done across? Over to you, doctor. Yeah, uh, I would just uh, like to um, uh, um, tell everybody that uh, 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 the Yunani therapy and all that kind of things very close to uh, the same ingredients that are used in Ayurveda and all that kind of thing. So, so mostly the principles remain the same. As far as Yunani is concerned, I mean, uh, Hamdad is one of the pioneer organizations as far as producing all the mostly all the medicines which are available in the old texts and everything and all that. So what we did uh, as far as Hamdad was concerned was to actually go back on our texts and, and all the medicines and all that kind of a thing. So we did find a few medicines which were which were used in influenza and uh, in epidemics and all that kind of a thing. So the good part is that Hamdad also has a, a private medical college in Delhi which happens to be the only private medical college in Delhi. So we have started some clinical trials which are based on two of our medicines, folklore medicines and all that kind of a thing. So all the international protocols have been utilized. Ayush department has given us a go ahead. So we are going forward for that also. So as you know, clinical trials can, can show up different things. So we are unsure about uh, how they are going to go about, but the trials are happening right now. The, it's a 606 bedded medical college so out of these things, 200 beds are already, it's like dedicated to COVID patients, which the Delhi government has told us to do. So that is another uh, thing that is, uh, that is our contribution towards uh, the management of COVID patients and all that. So as, as you also know that Hamdard has a lot of charitable obligations and all that kind of a thing. So we are, we are doing that also, whatever help that uh, the CCRM requires, which is a pioneer body in the research, as far as Yunani medicine is concerned, we are providing them all the ingredients and the formulations and all that kind of a thing. So, I mean, whatever Hamdard can do as an organization, we are moving forward towards that. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Azad. Uh, everybody is, you know, well uh, uh, informed about the wonderful activities that what Hamdard, uh, both as an educational institute, as well as, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, an institute that brings across products in the field of Yunani. And this is something that what I would like to focus on, that uh, the uh, entire pandemic, do you think that the entire Ayush systems, um, including uh, Yunani, Siddha, also Yoga, Ayurveda, uh, people have really uh, got to know that there's a lot of science behind it. And also both industry and the sector has done a lot in terms of seeing that what research, uh, uh, you know, could be identified around it. And do you think that it's more of the messaging that really changed during the entire pandemic? Uh, I would think, uh, as we already know, our IU systems have a lot of, uh, I mean, healing uh, and curative properties and all that kind of thing. So this was another methodology to actually look at ourselves and probably come out with uh, newer protocols uh, so that we can uh, test the curative properties and all that. The word cure is like a little bit of an uh, enigma right now. Uh, so uh, we need to take care of that also. So I think we are, we are trying to kind of go back to our texts and, and our medicines and all that and probably have some evaluation of them. We know that the immunity, immunity boosting uh, uh, efficacy is already there. So I, I think that is the, uh, the, the way forward, I, I would think so. Very nice. And um, what would be um, your two um, you know, immediate requirement to see that your business could be enabled better for Yunani there uh, between India and UAE? Yeah, I would think so. Um, I think uh, uh, Anurag Sharma ji uh, did tell tell the the panelists and everybody that like uh, how things are a little slow as far as uh, registration of products are there and then accepting our products and all that is is a little bit of a slow process over there. I mean, the standards are pretty high, and as you know that uh, our medicines are not that. Uh, I mean, they are not up to the the modern. Um, uh, kind of methodologies of testing and efficacy and all that kind of a thing. So I, I think that should be a little bit of a moderation in uh, providing us with the registrations and all that kind of a thing. I, I mean, even a, um, 
a state like Europe, which has a lot of countries, uh, does give us this particular thing that if you have 30 years of usage, the acceptability is there. So I think I, I think taking our products forward to the UAE and getting them registered is, is I think, the, the major issue from where I'm looking at it. I mean, obviously, we have the knowledge, we have the skill set and all that kind of a thing, but I think it's more slow moving. And I think companies really have to really focus on, on this particular area, probably leave their area of expertise and only, uh, I mean, put all the energies over here. So I think it should get a little simplified. That's what my uh, thing would be. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. I think that you also, uh, uh, you know, graced on a little bit about the THMPD law that's there across in Europe. And I think now that India also has got, you know, observator status over there, I think things are going to improve. But I think that you've really elaborated it well that, you know, what are the steps that what we would need to take between both the countries for Yunani to flourish. Over, yeah, to, my next over to my next panelist, Dr. P.M. Varia. Um, Dr. P.M. Varia, Kotakal really uh, is uh, another name for Kerala itself. So, uh, and Kerala as a state per se right now uh, was really leading uh, the entire IU systems being followed, um, you know, as, you know, a standard of care right from the beginning of the pandemic days. What has been your experience? And, you know, we would really love to hear from you on this. Over to you, doctor. Uh, thank you, Arvind. I'm sorry. Uh, am I audible? Yes, doctor, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Arvind. And uh, hey, good evening to all the panelists and the dignitaries. Uh, during the pandemic, it was a very, uh, very, very useful experience we had in Kerala. The government of Kerala has uh, <clears throat> constituted a, a expert committee to handle the pandemic, and uh, uh, se several several type of uh, committees as well as uh, groupings were done. And there are mainly five groups in which uh, the a program called Amritam, then Jeevan Daksha, like that. Different groups were uh, given different uh, set of medicines and it was evaluated. And it is very, very positive. Uh, after the, uh, the uh, after a certain time, uh, the data were collected. And uh, especially in Amritam project, there was more than 110,000 uh, participants. And uh, the final analysis, uh, it's actually a prevention. The, uh, the percentage of individuals affected by COVID is so negligible that it's only 0.037%. All others are uh, not even able to, not even uh, uh, affected the COVID, but very little percentage were affected. And that too, the seriousness was not there. So it was a very effective. A project and uh, still we are continuing. Along with this, the uh, we have that means the Confederation of Indian Industries have initiated a project called uh, uh, IU Steel Clinics that also is in the private sector, which helps the patients to uh, to improve the immunity as well as to get over the problem. So it was a very interesting and uh, a studious project very much doctor and also uh, uh, on the same time uh, you've also been uh, uh, you know attending to uh, you know uh, patients uh, over there and also people uh, uh, you know uh, during the entire pandemic everybody was really wanting a solution over there so what has been your experience uh, particularly from an organization front uh, you may that you know how the entire stage took on it so can you please tell us a little bit about what your organization did thank you yes yes of course uh, we had uh, positive COVID patients and uh, we have given the standard uh, classical medicines like Hindu Gandham and it was very effective. And not only that, the symptoms just like diarrhea, then uh, fever, cough, all those things came down within two, three days. So uh, not only that the patients were very happy as well as their relatives because it doesn't aggravate to a stage where the uh, ICU or ventilator is required. Most of the patients taking Ayurveda medicines were able to withstand the uh, bad effects of the uh, disease as well as to overcome it by earlier than the other treatments. So it's a very, very, uh, I must say that uh, Ayurveda has a very effective 
a treatment protocol for this type of uh, infections? Very much, Doctor. I think you've really uh, put it across beautifully. And my final question to you would be that what would be your uh, two requests to, um, you know, Dr. Amanpuri, our Honorable Council General, to see that how we could bridge uh, the, um, you know, both the countries yeah, to take yeah. on Ayush better? Yes. See, actually, we have uh, 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 we have a lot of uh, medicines made available in UAE, and now we are trying to register the products. But the one problem is that uh, it is very costly. We can actually we have 500 plus medicines, even though all those medicines are not required for a uh, treatment, because they, so some of them are very medicines used for rare treatments. But uh, very common medicines will be around 50. So the uh, registration procedures as well as the charge is very high. Our uh, uh, actually this can be considered to be brought down when uh, with a bilateral government discussions with the UAE authorities. Thank you very much, Doctor, for your thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your key comments, Doctor. Uh, moving over to my next panelist, Mr. Abhishek uh, Ramesh. So, um, uh, Mr. Abhishek, I'd like to ask you that uh, during the times of the pandemic and also post, um, you know, wellness centers are going to be uh, in great demand to see that how people could attend to their own lifestyle. So, how do you see that, you know, these uh, wellness centers uh, or, you know, Panchakarma centers that what Ayurveda has are going to be, uh, you know, a great uh, sense of interest post this pandemic? Over to you, Abhishek. Uh, namaste, everybody, friends in India and in UAE. Thank you, Arvind Ji and esteemed panelists for providing us this opportunity to see how Ayush can help the relations of UAE and India grow. Um, the question is very critical for UAE also because UAE is also positioning itself as a Place, place where people from the world would want to come, stay, and also transit. One experience that I'd like to share is that we have taken Ayurveda and the wellness aspects of Ayurveda and successfully integrated it into a resort facility in Europe. What we're doing over there is treating NCDs, which is 63% uh, cause of deaths in the world. So yes, we are going a, a pandemic uh, resulting in in a catastrophe and a huge number of deaths but what UAE can do is leverage Ayush integrated into their hospitality sector which is growing and they have such beautiful pro products over there and projects over there uh, and leverage the science of Ayurveda uh, the products the services to enhance the life of the people living there, as well as invite the world to come and experience our Indian science in UAE. Of course, India is only three hours away from UAE. That is, again, a challenge. But if, uh, like the other stalwarts of uh, on this panel, also decide to set up uh, centers over there, that would be, that would really benefit UAE. If we saw what Mr. Ahmed was showing in his brief presentation. Also, they had earmarked a certain section termed as a wellness resort. So this is uh, something which um, I think Ayurveda and the UAE government should definitely look into as to how we can present Ayurveda as a wellness product. Um, with that said, we should not dilute the clinical efficacy of Ayurveda as a line of treatment, which which is well researched, well documented. So we have to take a two prong approach and present both aspects to the people of UAE and the world. Very much for that, Abhishek. And uh... Just taking uh, one more point from what you mentioned that, uh, you know, what Mr. Ahmad also uh, presented here for the Shah City, saying that uh, inviting uh, organizations to come and set up, um, you know, wellness centers also over there. So uh, right now, uh, we do have a wellness center from Shri Tatwa there in uh, Dubai also right now. 
so now as as a wellness center um, you know organization what would be your requirement to to set up post pandemic so what do you think are changing now that you know that there is openness uh, from uh, uh, you know these charja healthcare city and more such partners right now what do you think would be the enabling factors uh, for you to set up more such uh, you know wellness centers over there Uh, thank you for that question so kerali as an organization we've been running 35 centers in 10 countries now abu dhabi we set up a very small center 14 years ago in on murur road um during the pandemic since the guidelines weren't clear as to how ayurvedic therapies can be performed in uae we had to re- re- uh, bring back our staff eventually they will be heading back um in terms of uh, an wellness center there are three critical components one is the qualified doctor who runs and who's the heart of the establishment the second are the paramedical staff who perform the duties of the services and third which uh, dr varier and um, mr sharma has touched that we need to get the products there so if yes. these three critical parameters are addressed then yes. only wellness centers can be established one good thing about wellness centers is that the topical application products are classified under a certain category which are easier to register so mm-hmm. we are able to get into the system the doctors are clearly defined in their moh parameters which helps us in setting up wellness centers the paramedical staff which is the key component yes. as well and yes. it's in a higher number in terms of uh, employment so for example a center will have maybe one doctor but maybe 10 to 12 paramedical staff yes so getting that paramedical staff yes. into uae the yes. challenge is about the examination which is required yes so um, no, very very, very correctly correct So very uh, properly yeah. put across Abhishek. So I think that it's not only on the uh, doctors that what we would need to focus, but also on the therapists that would be accompanying them for you know certain um, uh, you know therapies because Ayurveda and as well as wellness centers are uh, uh, a lot dependent on the therapists as well. Um, so thank you very much for that, Abhishek. Uh, uh, I'm moving across to my next panelist, Dr. Shrikant uh, Nambudri. um thank you very much abhishek for that so dr shrikant i do believe that you have a presentation uh, i would request you to kindly share your screen and also uh, keep your uh, uh, you know points brief uh, so that you know we would also have you know closing comments from our honorable council chair to post this thank you arvind ji uh, most respected uh, uh, council general dr aman puri sir uh or manoj nesari sir and uh, uh sri anurag sharma ji uh arvind of course arvind ji and madhav mutte sir uh, abhishek ramesh and other dignitaries uh, i will be just sharing uh, some of my slides so that uh, you can understand what is our institution called sridhiriyam and what is the what are the objectives and as part of this covid pandemic what are the things which we have already done hope my um, presentation is visible to all of you yes doctor it is and uh, i would request you to uh, kindly uh, you know uh, uh, go through it in brief thank you yeah sure sir uh, uh, first of all let me just uh, tell you late uh, dr n p p nambudri who is who was my who is my father who has started this sridhiriyam in so myself i am dr sega nambudri working out here as the chief medical officer and see basically the ayurvedic science it has got uh, the first and most, most ancient medical science existing today and over thousands of years of existence the basic principles so the as we all doctors we know that the basic principles have never been changed and it it has all the things are derived from the universal laws of nature and see coming to the eight branches i am just dealing with the uh, uh, fourth one that red color indicated shalakya tantra diseases above the clavicle and there are eight branches which has been explained by uh, the traditional ayurvedic medicines out of which 
general medicine, pediatrics, and Urthaka Chikilsa, ENT, ophthalmology, and which comprises of Salaka Tandra, uh, which includes ophthalmology, otology, rhinology, and oral hygiene, uh, dentist and laryngology, and of course, the disease of the cranium. And <clears throat> coming to the uh, these, this thing, the, the most uh, specialized uh, organ called netra or eyes, eyeball. Uh, see, the most developed branch of life science since ancient times, and the detailed description of eyes, it has mentioned in our classical textbooks, and systemic classification of diseases are again explained, and the managements like medical management, surgical modalities, and of course, the topical applications like netra kriyagalpa, and to some extent, the brief account of ocular trauma has, trauma has been explained in our classical field. And we, the Sridhar EMP, excel in this ophthalm, Ayurvedic ophthalmology with the goodness of modern technology assimilated into the old age, age old science. So these are some of the pics from different angle of this institution. Uh, the second one, you can see just see that the Department of Ayush has recognized Sridhar as uh, center of Excellence in Ayurvedic Ophthalmology. This is a 350-bedded hospital. And the third one, which you can see the uh, five-star uh, I mean, five level classical villa project, which the uh, the other rejuvenation treatments, all the things were going on, apart from this ophthalmology. And these are the some of the modern techniques and investigation tools uh, like OCT, fundus image, B-scan, HFA, uh, and other pathological equipments about hematology lab equipments these are these are uh, the things which we use for diagnostic purpose and as part of this covid 19 and ayurveda we have started initiated one uh, with the collaboration which has dr madhavan gutisar was also already mentioned here with the collaboration with the uh, I mean, confederation of indian industries hospital management association and medical uh, ayurveda medical association uh, we have started a joint program called Ayur Shield Immunity Clinic. And this was a cohort study which we have used the combination, a simple combinations like Indigantan Kashayam, Sudarshan Anguliga, Dasamola Gadatram, Rajadi Kashayam. These are the typical uh, classical Ayurvedic preparations which all the uh, companies are manufacturing. With this, we could trace 2,300 individuals. And the, uh, the uh, significant thing is the zero cases of COVID 19 has reported in this. And of course, we have distributed these medicines to our 800 uh, plus staff people. And there also no cases of COVID-19 has reported. And the information education communication, IEC activities, which we shared all these things in multiple platforms, locations, and our branches for general public. And as a continuation of that, Ayurveda has highly efficient improving immunity by, that's what I was just mentioning in the previous slide, that indicates with the general Ayurvedic classic. Books. So, doctor, so yeah. doctor um, uh, I have a very, uh, you know, interesting question here. Um, and, um, you know, during the COVID-19 pandemic, it's brought to our attention that the virus enters through, you know, our eyes and also, and, you know, more so from the extremities of the hand and also, uh, you know, from the nose and also affects the respiratory, uh, you know, organs. So what has um, your organization done in this particular um, you know, time to address, especially if you uh, specialize on the eyes. So what have you done as an organization? Yeah, that's what, sir. I am coming to the continuation of this COVID-19. Even with the mask, sanitizers, all the things, we have protected with the, our uh, oral pathway, nose, all the things. But uh, the exact thing is the eyes and ears are always exposed to the viral pathogens. So we have got another uh, the <coughs> specific treatment modalities like netradhara, say, eye wash and uh, instilling eye drops and for fumigation towards uh, uh, ears and external therapies to uh, just as preventing the virus attack through towards these these entities like eyes and ears and through this cohort study we understand that ayurveda has got a preventive against covid 19 and with around 30 centers across india we aim to spread these benefits of ayurveda nationally and this is our aim uh, means the, the possibilities which can be done uh, for spreading this virus, that can be done because we already had seen a good result with the specific Ayurvedic medications and treatments. And so we need to get uh, more uh, effort study with the full-fledged clinical trial with the CATRI approval. 
and going to the other uh, other <coughs> things like which are which these are the diseases which already we treat like diabetic retinopathy retinitis pigmentosa even nowadays as i was mentioning in the last nowadays we can see that uh, since because of this covid 19 pandemic we all are uh, adjusted with these type of systems and all the meetings all the things are going on through this uh, this uh, platform zoom or this uh, uh, this other online platform. we need to strain our eyes for long, long time so that again developing of dry eyes all the things so there are some of other preventive aspects to uh, uh, avoid the strain yes. for eyes yes and doctor the so, so doctor yeah so, so doctor. Uh, my my request is that I'm told by uh, the organizers that uh, you know we would uh, you know we are running a little late on time. Uh, my request is that I have another question for you that um, that in terms of uh, in terms of this pandemic, you know what are the things that uh, you when you specialize on the uh, eye um, you know part in Ayurveda. What would be your recommendation to uh, people at large? So uh, I would request you to kindly, uh, you know, take on this question so that everybody could benefit before I close in the session. That's right, sir. In the second picture, we can see that this is a highly sterile hydro filling manufacturing. As I already mentioned you, something in preventive thinking, we can able to manufacture medicines and for preventive this thing we have treatments also so with this i mean these are some of the pictures of uh manuf i mean manufacturing unit and the treatments so that uh the preventive line of medicines that can be packed in uh if at all anything is that can be done for exports uh um i mean export and all and with the with the same thing doc sri andrak sarma sir was telling previously that we have got some of the other criteria like the modern parameter criteria which, which we need to follow because that's what we uh, we uh, I mean, we face some of the difficulty to get uh, re licensed registration for some of our products and these are the I mean certifications which we already got but with all these things there are a lot of frustrations in different yes. different countries so with this uh, let me conclude with my slide thank you all once again for giving me this opportunity thank you thank you very much doctor and um, and i think that the presentation and your answers were really very benefiting to uh, you know all of us at large and yes you are known for you know quality eye care uh, you know center as well so uh, with this we come to an end of this panel i would first of all um, you know like to thank all my panelists for uh, really bringing across such uh, an entire plethora of knowledge uh, something that's uh, very, very tough to comprehend, but it's been simplified by all of you that would make it like a dinner table discussion. So it's been a real pleasure. And um, I would like to inform the uh, honorable, uh, our honorable uh, Council General, Dr. Aman Puri, uh, and also, um, you know, our representative from the ministry, Dr. Manoj Nesri here, that industry is really committed and is there with uh, you know both the governments to see that how we could comply with whatever in terms of regulatory conformity is required we have the best of people representing industry here right from products to services we did make a mention about uh, you know seeing that how universities could have mous together so from shishi tatva side uh, and also from all the uh, members who have universities uh, that are attached to them we are more than happy to see that how we come across with MOUs and also have student exchange in terms of product manufacturing and compliances. Industry is committed. And here, um, you know, with uh, Pravinji here from uh, FIKI who brings in the entire industry together, I'm sure that from FIKI side, we will make in relevant representatives both to government and also to the uh, Honorable uh, Consul General over there in UAE to see that how we could really take matters forward. At the outset, it's been really wonderful. Uh, uh, you know, bringing all these people together and moderating the session. Uh, and from my side and from Trishi Tatva's side, we are very committed to really seeing that how we could bring in quality Ayurveda uh, over there across to the entire region. And from the entire FIKI uh, community over here, Honorable uh, Council General, we are committed as an industry to really see that we uh, bring in the best of Ayurveda to the region over there. So with these few words, I would like to invite Dr. Raman Puri, the Honorable Council General of India to UAE, to come and please give his closing remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Arvind Varchaswi. Thank you so much.
uh, it has been a wonderful session on Ayush, and I truly believe that this ancient science of Ayush, uh, we, we say that you know it has been there in India for thousands of years. We have one of the oldest continuous living civilizations of the world. I truly believe that we who come from India are just the custodians of that knowledge and wisdom, and it actually belongs to humanity. It is our obligation to make sure that we are able to share this wealth of knowledge with the world, with our brothers and sisters all across the globe. And uh, in the true spirit of Vasudev Kutumbakam, where we uh, truly believe that the whole world is one family, uh, I think it is very much part of the DNA of every Indian. And uh, in that spirit, uh, we must do our best to share our wealth of knowledge uh, with everyone for the benefit of people all over the globe. Thank you so much. Uh, just like to uh, formally thank uh, Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry for helping us organize this uh, conference, the UA India Healthcare Conference 2020 aimed at catalyzing partnerships between UAE and India in uh, both the public and the private sectors. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Dubai Health Authority, the Sharjah Health Authority, our Ministry of uh, uh, the Ministry of Health and Prevention uh, based in Abu Dhabi, the National Health Authority of India, Dr. Sangeeta Reddy, who is uh, the uh, Joint Managing Director of the Apollo Hospital Group, also who is the President of FIKI. Uh, special thanks to Honorable Member of Parliament, Chiri Anurag Sharmaji, uh, who is uh, heading the Ayush FIKI panel. And uh, of course, to all the speakers, uh, uh, Dr. Manoj Nesari, uh, Dr. Varier, uh, Mr. Abhishek Ramesh, uh, and I believe some of the speakers have uh, probably left the panel right now. But my congratulations and thanks to all the speakers. And a very special thanks to Mr. Praveen Mittal, the senior director at FIKI, uh, with whom we had very long conversations, who has actually been the person instrumental in the success of this day-long conference, who has painstakingly uh, spoken to each and every uh, speaker, and who has really been the uh, force behind this event today. All our moderators, Dr. Narutam Puri, Ms. Smriti, and yourself, uh, Mr. Arvind, thanks to you. And uh, we had some wonderful sessions. Uh, just to let uh, everyone know, for the benefit of everyone, that uh, the Consulate, along with Fiki, will be working on a report of today's conference, which will be shared with all the speakers, with all the participants, and for any organization or individual who would like to benefit from this exercise. Uh, I must also uh, mention that uh, from the consulate, several of my colleagues uh, did put in a lot of hard work. And I, I think uh, my thanks uh, go to the entire team. Of course, uh, the team at the Embassy of India, uh, of course, uh, to the, both the ambassadors, Ambassador Bhavan Kapoor and His Excellency, Ambassador of UAE to India, uh, His Excellency Dr. Albana. Specifically, uh, in my team, uh, our Council Commerce, Ms. Neelu Roda, played a key role in the organization of uh, this conference. And uh, along with her colleagues, thank you so much. Uh, with these words, I would just like to uh, finally conclude by saying that this is a continued process of trying to call out the synergies and complementarities which exist between UAE and India in the healthcare sector so that we can catalyze the partnerships and collaborations and uh, which uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has only shown us that it is all the more important for health systems across the globe to collaborate with each other for the benefit of people in both countries. And India truly sees its partnership with the UAE as a building block of its partnership in the larger region and reaching out to the MENA region. Again, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the UAE leadership and all UAE authorities for providing exceptional support and care to all their residents in the times of this pandemic, 
including the very large Indian community who reside in the UAE. Thank you so much and wish you a lovely evening. Thank you.